So, Alan, I would love to know the history of this painting. In Kyoto, there's a street called、uh, Teramachi, the Street of Temples. And there's a well known tea shop on that street. I picked up a, a brochure from that tea shop, and it had all their teas in cups. So you could see the different colors of each tea. I would gaze at this every day, and one day I said, Well, why don't I just make them? The cups of tea large, like they're big pools of water. The thing about this painting is that it, it, a lot of them plumb a kind of subconscious memory. Okay. I just happened to get on the train in Berlin and sit next to this. Young Polish guy. So we went to Warsaw together and he took me to his mother's、uh, apartment. And then he said, Well, let's go to Krakow. My father lives there. And his father had a, a house in the、uh, outskirts of Krakow、uh, where there were、uh, trees and fields. The, the Northwest painter William Ivey talked about subconscious memory in a way I, I liked, in that、uh, he said he once completed a painting. And then he looked at that painting and he said, Oh, now I know where this painting came from. And it came to him after he finished the painting. So that's what I mean about a, a, a subconscious memory. Something clicks and it tells you, oh, yeah, that was the time that I was in Krakow at night looking at the fields and the trees. I'm curious, you're talking about a subconscious memory. So you must put yourself in a sort of state to access that. Painting is a real tactile exercise, so you kind of just start with lines. On a good day, you let the painting take you where it wants to go, and you try to follow as you know, unhindered as possible.、Mm -hmm. What happens on a bad day? I have a lot of collage material. And tell me about your ink. The traditional way is to have ink sticks that you、uh, rub. With、uh, on an inkstone with water、uh -huh. until it gets dark enough,、yeah. and then if you're dealing with a massive space, you might want to use the instant ink they call Bokuju, which is、uh -huh. you know, concentrate. I tend to、uh, cover large spaces with the instant ink, but then when I want more tonality, shades、uh -huh. within. Monochrome.、Mm -hmm. I use the ink sticks because there's a variety of ink sticks. Some have a brownish tint, some have、mm -hmm. a bluish tint,、mm -hmm. some have a purple tint. So I'll use the ink sticks and splatter some of those different、uh, tonalities within the larger、mm -hmm. black framework. You're using Tools of the ancient past. I mean, clearly you're doing what we would call an abstract, a very contemporary painting, but out of a tradition. I just would love to hear you talk a little bit about what that tradition means to you and how you talk to it. Yeah, you know, I never would call myself a brush painter.、Mm -hmm. um, I'm, I'm a painter.、Oh, but I, I love using the materials, and I think. Uh, in the three or four years I lived in Kyoto, I was able to brush shoulders with some of the、uh, masterpiece paintings and some of the great、um, brush painters. And of course, I like the brush painters who are a little more eccentric or a little more exuberant or wild with their brush.
I am, uh, I am fascinated by this, I'm fascinated by all your paintings, but this one I find so interesting also because of the shape. Tell me how you picked that size of paper. Well, when I was visiting a, um, a, a friend of a friend in, in Nara, the man who had this, a dream of uh, renovating these old houses, maybe having a center to teach art to youth. And uh, we were at this old house, we had lunch, and she took me to Nara, where the owner of this land had a shop and a gallery. Before I left the shop, he just kind of pulled the drawer around and he said, here, you want to try some of this paper? And it was this shape. And I found that um, I really enjoy working on different sizes. So whenever I go to Japan, I look for different sizes of paper because it's always a challenge. I really want you to talk about the edge of the painting, of all your paintings, pretty much. I like to feel like <laughs> There's really no edge. Okay. I like to feel like I want the viewer to see the painting and follow it as it goes off the perimeter into, you know, into the ether. Because I like to paint like it's perpetual motion and it's going beyond the limits of what the painting actually is. I, I, I'm trying to figure this out and I'm curious what, what you think. When you see this and you think about the, you know, conveying that it goes beyond this painting, do you think of this as a window? I don't know if it's a window. I, what I like to do is to suggest that what you're looking at is not one flat surface, but layers and layers as I imagine maybe the earth is, layers and layers of protoplasm and liquid. And I want to make the viewer feel like they can go into the painting deeply. So it's great that these two paintings are actually next to each other. I think it's very interesting to see the difference here. I want you to talk first about these circles. I know you, I know the circle means something to you. Uh, ancient Butterfly, I think the title came because I looked at it when it was done and it looked like the minuscule sections of a membrane or something. Just generally talking about all the paintings of this size, it was kind of odd that I had a stack of these small pieces of, of rice paper. And it kind of set me off in a momentum driven challenge that I want to use up this whole stack. I think if you look at them, you could discern this kind of connective momentum going on as, as I went one after another. Yeah. And I don't always work that way. It just happen. You know, in poetry, we talk about a constraint, right? Like the haiku or the sonnet. And the constraint for you would be the paper in many ways. I can paint postcard size to five feet by five feet. It doesn't daunt me. It's just interesting different interesting propositions of space mm -hmm. that you enter mm -hmm. and how are you going to enter that space and what kind of journey are you going to take what do you think the ideal way to to experience a painting is it's probably good to approach a painting without a lot of preconception of what you think a painting should be. 
and just see if the painting speaks to you. Just have an open mind when you approach a painting mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and just see if it works for you. And what do you think it means to have a painting work for you? If it touches you and it communicates something to you, then I think it works. It's interesting, so many people are afraid that they don't get art. I think you should be a little more emotional instead of trying to intellectualize it. I mean, you have years and years of training and skill and a gift, but you too are surrendering, it sounds like, at the beginning. The you surrender and you're like on this constant search for your voice. I love the tradition, I love using ink on rice paper, but I'm gonna have to find a way that works for me and that is who I am. And that's so much easier said than done. You just have, there's so much trial and error and you just keep doing it and doing it and gradually you, you feel like you're coming out of the, the wilderness and maybe you're starting to walk on this path that maybe is yours but you know you just keep walking until you draw your last breath so it's an endless kind of journey